My name's uh, Professor David Thompson and I'm the founder and CEO of Thompson Software Solutions. We've got about 10 products in total now. What we're probably best known for is the Thompson test chart. We've got nearly 8,000 users of that out there now. There's three systems that have caused a little bit of a stir this year. The first is our new near chart system. Modern tablets have lovely resolution and are more than up to the job. We developed an app a few years ago which runs on an iPad, which works fine, but the downside of that is you have to hand the patient the iPad and then if you want to change the test, you've got to take it back, change the test and hand it back. So the holy grail has always been, wouldn't it be nice if you could control the iPad directly from a, a program on your PC. So that, that's what we've developed. This is called the, the Thompson Near Chart, and it runs on a PC. You just link the, the device, and it can be Android or Apple. You scan the QR code, and it then produces a link via our web server to the, the device. And you then have to do just a quick calibration so you know the size of that device. And then you can have a huge range of tests displayed on your, your device without taking it back from the patient. It all just magically appears on the screens. So you've got all your binocular vision tests, you've got near duochromes, you've got stereopsis, you've got Amsler charts. So you can get rid of all your boxes and cards and everything, do it all on a tablet. The other thing is this little beauty here. So there's a lot of interest, as you probably found, in virtual reality. Uh, well, here we go. Here's a virtual reality headset for about 20 pounds. And the reason why it's so cheap is that you put your own phone in there. And then we have some software which we've called the Virtual Synoptophor, which again runs on a PC. And uh, you do a little calibration, you link up your phone to your PC, and then you have a Virtual Synoptophor. So you can do a whole range of binocular vision tests. You can uh, measure fourier, you can measure torsion, you can do fixation disparity, all the synoptophore slides for exercising fusional reserves, you can do random dot stereograms, 3D images, you can do measure an isoconia, which is relative image size between the two eyes. So a whole range of tests. This is the other system that has been causing a lot of interest. We actually launched the clinical eye tracker about five years ago now. And uh, what it does is really what it says on the tin. It measures eye movements, but it also measures um, the, the position of each eye. So it's actually a very powerful binocular vision test as well, because it measures what's happening to your binocular vision while you're doing a, a real world task, like reading or making saccades or whatever. It's all based around this little bar here, this is made by a Swedish company, that picks up the position of your eyes and then you can display on the screen here really anything you like. So if you're interested in eye movements while reading, you can put some text up there and literally you just click on record and it will measure exactly where you're looking on the screen. This is actually a, a recording of eye movements while reading and is showing what happens when you read is you fixate on one word, then make a saccade, then a fixation and then you make a big eye movement at the end of the line. And uh, so this is lovely clean results. And if I click on that button there, this is now showing what's happening to the right and the left eye together. So this is a patient who's got good binocular vision. They're keeping the two eyes locked together. And this is actually showing their disparity between the position of the eyes while they're doing a dynamic task. A poor reader looks something like that. As they're looking along there, they're making a lot of what we call regressions. We can replay their actual pattern of eye movements. You can actually see exactly where they were looking while they were reading. You can use it to measure pupil responses. We have a pupillometry module here as well. And this is pupil reflexes. So the light comes on here, you get a pupillary constriction, then the light goes off and the pupil dilates. It adds a whole new dimension to binocular vision assessment. Binocular vision tests haven't really changed for decades and they're all very static. The normal fixation disparity and all the rest, you give the patient lots of time to fixate. Whereas in the real world, you're always moving your eyes. You never stop moving your eyes. And so it's a bit artificial, the test we normally do. What this allows you to do is get the patient to do a real world task like reading or making saccades or searching something and you see what happens to their binocular vision. So that's a real advantage 
for those of us who look after binocular vision. Uh, and the other advantage, as I say, is providing an objective way of assessing how good an intervention is. Rather than just relying on the patient's symptoms, if you present, if you're uh, you're giving them an intervention to help them read, whether it's color or prisms or exercises. You can measure their pattern of eye, eye movements while they're reading without the intervention, add the intervention, and you've got a, a, if you've got a change in the pattern of eye movements, it's telling you that your intervention is effective. So lots of development work going on with this at the moment. New modules coming online, uh, preferential looking. We've got a big project going on to analyze eye movements in dyslexics. And what we're hoping is eventually we'll have a module which will at least give a traffic light system to detect dyslexia. And maybe that could be used in schools as an objective way of screening children to say, okay, this child has a high probability that they have dyslexia because you have a certain fingerprint of eye movements if you have carefully controlled text. So we're working with a team up in the University of Central Lancashire uh, on that project. So. Who knows? Watch this space.